welcome back to the Chaos Corner. This is going to be part three of the Halloween Village, and this one is the casket shop. We have some caskets falling out of a window. There's a casket on the side. We even have a little sign to paint up if we want to. This little sign is very hard to get to pour properly in the mold. Um, so we don't guarantee that that little sign comes with the uh, funeral parlor when you order it. So the funeral parlor, I figured, um, sorry, casket shop, not funeral parlor, casket shop's going to be a little bit more of an upbeat color. We're going to do it in blues uh, with a gray roof. There's really nothing new to show on this, so I'm just going to show a little bit of painting. Um, we're going to do the windows first so that I can get those out of the way and not be like, oh, I forgot to do the windows. And uh, then I'll just show some of the painting um, and, and make this one a, a short one, I believe. <laughs> and so this time I found a lighter blue. It's called Cloudless. I'm still not going to leave it completely as is. I'm going to add even just a little bit of white to it. As long as it's not all dried up. See, even that was a little bit too bright. You want just a hint of blue when you're doing the windows because that kind of helps emulate the, the look of glass when you're painting. I guess it's because it's um, reflecting the sky something to that effect. So again, doing a dry brush. You don't want a whole bunch of and yes, I'm being a little sloppy on the windows because I'm going to go back in and paint the details a little better. So I don't really have to worry about how nice I've got the windows. So there are the windows. Very simple, very quick. This is going to be a, such a quick one. Now the main color is going to be a turquoise blue. And 
And I think that's because in all the Old West shows, the Undertaker or the, the Casket Maker always seemed to have like a really twisted sense of humor. And so he'd probably have the most colorful building. And then also, it's a kind of a, a mental thing where when you're really stressed, a nice upbeat color helps soothe you out. Soothe you out? Soothe you over? Something to that effect. That or pastel colors will also... Pastel colors are more soothing, where uh, brighter colors are more uplifting. <laughs> okay, the camera messed up. Sorry, guys. But this is going on kind of thin because, again, it's not the best quality paint. So I'm going to have to go back over and do another coat. You can kind of see that it looks splotchy, which since it is a haunted house or in a haunted village, we could leave it like that and it would just help it look even more distressed, but I don't want to do that. I want my colors to start out nice and crisp and then stress them out. Now this has um, a few more pieces of wood that are chipped away and distressed, so those I'll go back in with some of that sandstone color and kind of buff in the sandstone color in those areas so that way when it's given the wash or antiquing if you want to call it that it'll look even more distressed in those areas Okay, I'll be back when I have finished painting out the turquoise, and I'll probably even go ahead and do the roof before coming back. Okay, I have the turquoise blue painted, and I also have the dark gray roof part painted. Now I'm going to do the accents and I'm going to do white trim with some uh, tropical blue um, to kind of help accent the turquoise that was used. Um, I'm going to start with the white and the white is going to be on the pillars. I did really like all the black up against the turquoise, but I don't think I'm going that route. I'm going to go with the white like I originally planned to do the trim. I think the door is going to be the tropical blue um, probably the stairs the little steps and the stairs on the side will be tropical blue and the little porch will be tropical blue
and then the white will highlight the door. And yes, I'm purposely being a little sloppy. And then I'll go back and crisp up these lines, kind of like I just did, but probably use a toothpick because I just feel like I can get a much straighter line with a toothpick and not have any stray um, bristles from the brush going around. And also this will take a second, this will need a second coat to get the white to be nice and crisp. So when I come back in to do that second coat, that's when I will go a little bit more smooth, make sure I crisp up the lines. And I don't know why I hold my pinky out the way I do. A lot of times I'll um, anchor it onto the piece in a spot that I'm not going to smear paint. But then a lot of times I've already painted somewhere and I don't really have a place to anchor my pinky. But sometimes I find anchoring my pinky helps me get a straighter, more precise line going on. Definitely going to need another coat. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to do the trim work all the way around and then come back and I'll paint the, um, the tropical blue into some areas and then after that it will the uh, three caskets are going to be done in kind of a pine wood, you know, pine wood box and all that stuff. All right, I'll be back soon. Okay, I have the turquoise blue painted, and I also have the dark gray roof part painted. Now I'm going to do the accents. And I'm going to do white trim with some uh, tropical blue um, to kind of help accent the turquoise that was used. Um, I'm going to start with the white. And the white is going to be on the pillars.
I did really like all the black up against the turquoise, but I don't think I'm going that route. I'm going to go with the white like I originally planned to do the trim. I think the door is going to be the tropical blue. Um, probably the stairs, the little steps and the stairs on the side will be tropical blue and the little porch will be tropical blue. And then the white will highlight the door. And yes, I'm purposely being a little sloppy. And then I'll go back and crisp up these lines. Kind of like I just did, but probably use a toothpick. Because I just feel like... I can get a much straighter line with a toothpick and not have any stray um, bristles from the brush going around. And also this will take a second, this will need a second coat to get the white to be nice and crisp. So when I come back in to do that second coat, that's when I will go a little bit more smooth, make sure I crisp up the lines. And I don't know why I hold my pinky out the way I do. A lot of times I'll um, anchor it onto the piece in a spot that I'm not going to smear paint. But then a lot of times I've already painted somewhere and I don't really have a place to anchor my pinky. But sometimes I find anchoring my pinky helps me get a straighter, more precise line going on. Definitely going to need another coat. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to do the trim work all the way around and then come back and I'll paint the, um, the tropical blue into some areas and then after that it will the uh, three caskets are going to be done in kind of a pine wood, you know, pine wood box and all that stuff. All right, I'll be back soon. 
and back. Okay, so what I've done so far is I have trimmed out the white and trimmed out the lighter blue and I think on camera I had painted the shutters white but I changed my mind and I, cha uh, I painted them the blue because I'm going to be trimming all the windows in white. So I'm just going to do a window trim on camera. with the toothpick when you start with a toothpick after you get your first line going kind of start back in where you left off like a little bit further you know like back into the paint don't start in the black or in the negative I guess um, because it kind of helps even out the line. Everyone has their own way of doing things. There's no one way to accomplish these looks. This is just the way I do it. There are some other great people out there teaching how to paint ceramics that, you know, they've even been doing it. They've been doing it a lot longer than I have. Um, there's people out there that have all kinds of certifications for teaching. And they're great at it. So you should look them up. Watch them, see how they do it. See how I do it. Take what you like from each one and make it your own. There is no wrong way to art, not whatsoever. And if you wanted your haunted house to not be all like decrepit, or I should say your haunted village, if you didn't want it to be all decrepit and you wanted nice, bright, shiny colors, make them bright and shiny. Okay, so there's one window trimmed in the white. Now I'm gonna. Um, step off, finish the windows, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the doorway and the little arches between the columns and I'm going to do up some detail on the columns too, I think. Alright, be back soon. Okay, the windows are all done. And I don't know if you guys can see, but on the shutters I took the um, opposite end of the toothpick and scratched out on the shutters to make it look more defined because having three layers of stuff filled in all those fine little shutter slats. So I did that. So now I'm going to work on the door area and this part right here it's probably hard to see because I'm not close enough. But this part I'm going to paint in the house color because I believe it's the part around the door that would actually be part of the house.
columns I think are hiding some of that. So we'll just bring it down there like that. Okay, and then these have like little triangles in the arches that would be see-through. So you would probably see some of the house color through them. Now I need some more of the, whoops, <laughs> that was a bit much. Uh, trying to decide how much of the door I want to leave white, how much I want to paint in the blue. I think the lighter blue is going to be just an accent color on this. Just put my palm in the gob of white paint. Now, let's see. I think we're going to do a stripe here. Now, just to kind of show you, there's another little stripe right here that I'm going to do in the darker blue of the house, except for my blue has dried up, so I'm going to have to get out more. 
And because it's dried up, I'm having a harder time getting it to go in place. And it's covering things up. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and I just put my palm in that light again. Okay, now I am going to get a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange. Because there's a little detail up here in the triangle that I want to do just a little bit more detail than one color. It looks like a rising sun or a setting sun, so that's kind of why I chose yellow and orange. And maybe this is like a piece of stained glass that has managed to survive or just a straight up painting on the house. Whatever you want to think about it. So see there's the there's that little detail. And now I'm going to do the orange. And the orange is of course just going to be a couple of the stripes. I think that first little bit of paint that came out was just a paint booger because no paint was getting on my toothpick to be able to come off of the toothpick.
Okay, there's that done. Now we need to do pine wood boxes. Country tan. Anytime I see coffins stacked up like this outside of a building, I always think of an old West show where, you know, most people can't afford those fancy luxury black lacquer things. But you could totally leave them the black if you want. But I just feel like these would be pine wood caskets. So that's what I'm going to make them. Now, if you had some little metallic jewelry findings that were like, I don't know, a bat or a face, you could put those on the top of the caskets to make them look a little bit more sinister or special. I don't have any of that, so I'm not going to. Simple as that. see a couple of places that I've missed so I'll go back in and fix that oh I just put my finger in the window I might have to go back and fix that And yeah, I can't leave that messed up like that, so I'm going to go fix the window real quick. I want those colors to at least start out bright before I do the antiquing slash washing. All right, I'll probably fix that off a of camera. Sorry, but there is the house complete before. And I'm not going to do any dry brushing on the roof this time. I'm just going to leave it and see how it turns out with the washes. So I will come back when it is time to do the washes. I've got to let everything dry really good. Be back soon. I think we're ready to mess this up.
<laughs> okay, so everything's dry and painted. And, well, I thought it was dry. Found a wet spot. Found a wet spot. Oh well. Okay. So. <gasps> okay. So before you shake up your bottles, <laughs> make sure they're closed. <laughs> oh, goodness sakes. Oh, me. Okay. So I just shook it up and made a mess, which, okay. That's why you protect your... That's why you protect your space. So if you do get silly like that, <laughs> you don't ruin stuff. Now, I don't want this streaking that much, so I'm going to kind of go back and brush it out a little bit. Basically, I'm doing this so it just doesn't look like something just got poured on it because there's too many streaks. See? Too many streaks. So I'm just going back with some water and kind of helping move it around a little bit better. Fiddlesticks. Well, I didn't check the stained glass window, and it wasn't dry like I thought it was. It looked dry, but it wasn't dry. So I'm going to go back and fix it one more time. And let it dry. <laughs> but you know, this is this is what you do. You you make art. Art isn't perfect. It isn't There's no script. You could do everything the exact same that I'm doing and still end up with a completely different look.
got to be careful. I don't want to wipe away the sun again. <laughs> I've done that like three times now, right? All right, I'm going to leave this alone and I'll be back. Things are actually dry this time. <laughs> and now it's time to do the red, reddish brown wash. Going a little bit heavier on the reddish brown over where the black came down on the white because I want to tone down that black. And this reddish brown is like making sure that everything looks dirty, basically. I want people to be able to know that there was white on the building at one point in time. And I want to hint at the fact that it was a bright blue and I realized something I didn't go back and like brush in some tan on the distressed wood area I thought about going back and doing it, but something just didn't feel right about doing it, so I didn't.
what I just did is I took a little bit of the black wash and put it back over top of the stained glass area just to give it a little bit more of a dirty look. And that's it for the funeral parlor. Or, I'm sorry, not funeral parlor, casket shop. Okay, next up, I'm try trying to decide if I'm going to do the church or the um, tree. I think I'm going to do the vulture tree next because it's actually part of the same village. And then I'll do the crypt after the church, after the tree, because again, it's part of the same village. And then the pieces that aren't part of the village will be done after all this. Okay, so for now, that's what I have for you on the casket shop. And we'll catch you on the next one.